In this example, we are going to explore the idea of inheritance in CSS. Recall that CSS rules or styles, as they are technically called, apply to HTML elements. Now, HTML elements are hierarchically organized into a tree, with the top of the tree being the HTML tag, which in turn contains the head and body tags. And the body tag, for instance, will then go on and contain a whole bunch of P or H1 tags. CSS inheritance governs how styles apply to the elements nested below a particular element. So let's go ahead and understand this topic. Let's take the example of a pretty simple HTML page, like virtually any HTML page that we've seen or that we will see going forward. It starts with a head tag and it has a body tag. In other words, there's a nice hierarchical structure to the HTML page because the HTML element is the root of a tree. This tree contains a head element and then a body element. The body element in turn holds a whole bunch of other nested elements. CSS will apply to only visible portions, so it only applies to the body. It's never going to apply to the head, which only contains metadata. Let's now consider what the hierarchical structure in this HTML page looks like. We have the body element, which can be thought of as the root. This then has h2, h3 and p elements. It also has an unordered list. That unordered list, which is represented by a ul tag, in turn has a couple of list elements or li tag elements. Now here's the deal. When we apply a CSS style or a rule to the body element, what elements are going to be governed by this rule? That's the question that we are seeking to answer. For instance, here we've defined a CSS style or a rule saying that the body element should have background color of cyan. The question now is what elements specifically will be governed by this rule? The body element, of course, but the body element includes a whole bunch of other elements within it. All of those elements will also be governed by the same style and therefore all of them will have the same background color of cyan. This is an important point. Anytime you apply a rule or a style to a particular element, all of the nested elements below it are also going to be governed by the same style. And here on screen now is what this style looks like. As you can see, the entire page has been turned into this bright, lurid, blue cyan background. By the way, as an aside, let's take a second to talk about the font family property. It's very common to specify that the font family should be sans serif. This means that it should be without serifs. Serifs in a font refer to the little flourishes which apply to fonts, the elements called glyphs. Serifs typically make the font harder to read. And so on web pages, it is usual to turn serifs off. Okay, coming back to inheritance. What if we wanted to make only the unordered list elements here show up in red? Well, we would create a new style. The selector on this style would be UL and it would say that the property color should be set to the value red. This would have the effect of applying to the unordered list element as well as to all of the nested elements beneath it. In other words, the LI list element bits of the HTML. You can see the output on screen now. The unordered list and all of the list elements now show up in red. Notice again, not the UL element alone, but also all of its nested list elements showed up in red. Now let's say we wanted all of the headers to have a particular font size, say of 40 pixels. Well, we could very easily create a style and specify both H2 and H3 should be governed by this style. There at the bottom of the screen, you see a style which applies to H2 and H3 elements and sets their font size to 40. Now, this is probably not exactly what we had in mind because when this page is rendered, all of the headers look exactly the same. That's probably not what we wanted. We probably still want some kind of differentiation between the different types of headers. To add that, we might specify that we want the H3 headers to be in italics, but not the H2 headers. 
we would then go ahead and create a new style. This time, apply it only to the H3 headers and specify that the font style property should be set to italic. Now, both the H2 and the H3 headers will have font size 40, but only the H3 header will be italicized. That's what you can see now on screen. Only the H3 headers are italicized, but they still have the same font size, size 40 pixels as the H2 header. Coming back to our original example, the entire body had background color cyan because that style was inherited by all of the nested elements. Now what happens if an element wants to change this and it wants its own specific background color? Is that possible? It certainly is. You can override any inherited property. Simply create a style which applies to say the paragraph element which sets the background color to be lawn green. Now only the paragraph elements, the elements P, will have a different background color. This is also a really important point. For any HTML element, you can create a specific style and that style will override the parent style. So you inherit the style of your parent element unless you change something specifically. If you change something specifically, it's this new style which will apply to you. Remember also that you can apply multiple different styles to any given element. All of them will go ahead and apply to the element. Hopefully this example has demonstrated to you the power of CSS. The example code is now on screen. The key points for you to remember from this example are that A, when you define a style, that style applies not only to a particular element, to all of the elements nested beneath it. And B, that for any element, the more specific style overrides the less specific style inherited from the parent.